Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Um, good morning. Um, so my name is Al Su Yuan. I'm the one of the hosts, and this is John Collier. Yeah. yeah. So we work on Eclipse Codewind, um, and we're here to talk about how it integrates with uh, Eclipse Che, which there's already been a couple talks on. Yeah. So, so a quick introduction to myself. Um, I'm the development lead for the uh, iterative development for Codewind, um, and I'm also involved in a couple of uh, open source projects as well. I'm the uh, uh, WTP Web Tools platform, PMC, and also the uh, project lead for, for uh, WTP Server Tools as well. And I'll, I'm also a project lead for uh, Eclipse Tools for Cloud Foundry. So I've been in the open source project uh, around for quite a bit of, as well. And today we're going to talk about specifically on this uh, CodeWin project, which is a, a fairly new project we started on in February. Uh, 2019, so which is still a very young project. So, John, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so yeah, I'm John. I work with Elson. Um, I focus primarily on CodeWinds integration with Kubernetes and Eclipse J. So, it's nice that I kind of get to come here and talk about it. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So, um, so this um, you can you can follow us on Twitter or anything like that. So, this is our agenda today. Um, so what we are going to talk about today is I uh, just want to talk a little bit on the background on uh, cloud native development to start with, and then we'll go straight to talk about Eclipse Cobwin and Shea as well, and then why we are using Shea in a sense that um, to, to work with Cobwin, and then uh, how do we actually plug into Cobwin and uh, talk about some of the features, and of course, uh, a session without demo will be a little bit boring, so we'll, of course, we'll do some, some demos in there as well. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions during the, uh, the presentation, stop me and then uh, feel free to ask questions along the line. Okay, so let's talk about uh, background a little bit. So, let's talk about cloud development first. Uh, so, cloud deployment, um, typically if you're going through a cloud deployment, you will be going through a CDI CD pipeline for which you will be checking your code into team repository, and then the, your code will get picked up, and then the pipeline will go through all the necessary stuff to do the build, test, and go through a cycle and do the deployment. Now, this process is, from the deployment perspective, is, is great. It's, you've got a, a very uh, stringent, and every time you go through the process, it's, it's good. But if you actually have to do that during the development, you're not going to check in every single line of pieces of code into your team repository when you're doing your testing on it. So you definitely need something before that, before you check into that, and then um, do before you actually do the deployment. So what's cloud native de uh, development? So if you think about, um, Cloud native development, uh, we're talking about the applications that are running within the containers today that you are intended to deploy to a cloud environment. Um, so dealing with applications where that's running inside a container, when you're doing development, there are certain things that are um, uh, that will that will kind of block you from that. But then uh, the main reason that you want to do that in in a, in a cloud kind of applications is um, because it's, it's Basically, you find when you're running through your development, you're actually running in a container, which contains your uh, your stack of runtimes and then your your libraries and any fix pack or anything any any software that's needed. So basically, it's the same type of environment that you have on your production. So if you are running a development in there, then when you do the development, by the time you complete, you almost can can be sure that you are actually running in the same. Like it will be work in, working in your production environment as well. So that's why there's some uh, benefit on on doing cloud native development. And then um, you can actually test directly uh, the output of the build. So because that's what you are actually running as production, uh, you can also do service injections as well because it depends on how and where you are actually running your your development on. Um, so uh, you, in some cases, you are actually testing directly on the cloud, for which this is the, um, the the focus of what we are going to talk about in the shade scenarios. In some cases, you may be just running on your local system, or maybe running Docker containers directly on your local system. That can work too, and uh, Cobain actually supply, uh, support it too. Um, and then you will be able to, to debug on that. Uh, Given that the application is actually running within a container, there's a little bit of indirection. It's not the actual server that's running on your local system. It's running in your container. You need to expose the port and stuff like that before you can actually do a debug on that. So there's some indirection on that. So, um, so uh, cloud-native development, so history. Um, 
in so far, uh, many people are actually doing you know, local type of development in place. You've got your local IDE, you've got your local runtime, running through that, and then um, and, and then and then trying to check into GitHub and then pick up by CI/CD pipeline. Now uh, the history of that, like people are starting to moving more and more into cloud development. Uh, in a sense, there's a, a slight delay on on what we are actually doing deployment. Deployment is much people have much more cloud deployment at these days, but uh, doing direct uh, development on, on cloud is slightly different because there's some penalty associated with that. Now, um, if you are running <coughs> containers, um, there's a, a, you need to set up the containers, you need to build the containers, that takes time. Um, and then iterative development which is the, the other thing. If your application is running within a container, let's say if you recycle your container, the server get recited, the container get recited, you lose some of the state in there. There's some setup that you can actually do to, to prevent that. Um, but then accessing log, even as simple as accessing log files, right? Because uh, you will have easy access if you're running on a cube system, you can actually get the logs from, the, from your container output. But sometimes your server have more than just the container output but you've got other server logs. I've got um, some of the um, like the error logs that is actually producing specific to that particular server that sometimes you find yourself have to shell into it and basically execute into the, the container in order to find out those logs and stuff like that. So even as simple as log itself, if you're doing a container type of an environment, um, it's a little bit more difficult. So um, tools in CodeWin is just to help you out to reduce those tasks when you're doing uh, application development on a container. So um, yeah, so we can talk about that, how we actually do that. So CodeWin. Uh, CodeWin itself is an open source project in Eclipse, uh, starting on February 2019. Um, it's, uh, there's actually a little bit of history on that. Um, there's a project called MicroProfile, which is an IBM internal. Um, microclimate. Microclimate, uh, which is an IBM internal um, uh, uh, software on, on that uh, it's not never open source so we later find we find that uh, when we look across the board there are many companies doing different things on um, on how you're actually doing uh, native development on it there's not uh, standardized nice ways to do it uh, that's why we start up this Eclipse Cowin project to do that so basically it's a cloud native development environment for Kubernetes um, in a sense Cowin vision is actually slightly more than Kubernetes uh, we as, we also support like local type of scenarios, so kind of bridging you, allowing you to basically run and test on your local system still in a containerized environment, uh, but then you can actually move to Kubernetes as well and when you're doing testings. Um, it provides ways for you to you know rapidly create and, and uh, develop your application, doing debug on it, uh, anything that you would expect on, on a typical uh, development environment. So uh, before I move, for there any questions so far? Okay. Uh, actually, people at the back, are you hearing me okay? Okay. All right, uh, so um, so there's many styles for building uh, applications. So I just list a couple of them. You can do a custom Docker build on that. Um, you've got Audio, which is an OpenShift uh, CLI um, on that. And then um, Scaffold is another one. Uh, CodeWin currently, just to showcase, we are actually kind of build uh, structure independent, we actually support three different types of uh, build systems today. Um, so CodeWin, what, what we call the CodeWin style, the first style is uh, basically you've got Docker containers, you can actually, you, um, for this one, you've got complete flexibilities on your applications, you include your Docker uh, uh, container information, so your Docker files is actually part of your project, so you have got full control on the environment that you have. Uh, you can actually, like those, containers building is actually part of your application. So you will, um, the entire stack is actually within that. Um, then we've got the Absidy. Absidy is another open source project that's going on. It, that is a, a kind of end-to-end -end, um, scenario for, uh, it's, it's itself is a CLI, but it has also <coughs> defined stacks like application creation has got templates associated with it. Um, it also has got some of the um, uh, architectural roles in there. So you will expect an um, uh, enterprise architect to be defining how you build and how you actually run your applications. Then the developers will be just using that type of environments and then just focus on, um, on, on doing your application development from there. Uh, you can also adjust a little bit from, from there as well. Um, and then OpenShift, um, Odoo. 
Um, this is a S2I based model. It's running on OpenShift only today. Um, there's actually a John effort with us, with our team, uh, with, uh, with the RAD uh, OpenShift team, uh, just to make Odoo itself to be uh, more Qt generic, uh, so that we can actually run it across on that on top of not only OpenShift but any Kubernetes environments as well. So, um, so why Eclipse? So we open source it simply because we want it to become a platform. Uh, as I showed earlier, we you can have different build systems. So no matter what build system you are, you have, you you can actually build some extensions in it and then you can actually run it as part of the Chromium framework. So, um, and then Eclipse, Eclipse itself is actually uh, the Eclipse Foundation, we've got a long history of them to start with. Um, and then uh, many of the development tools is actually part of the Eclipse Foundation as well. If you take a look at, across the board, Eclipse IDE most obviously is one of the, them. Uh, and then Eclipse, uh, there is that, Shay, um, there is the um, editors. And then Shay itself is where we are actually doing integration with. All of them are actually under the Eclipse Foundation. That's why we decided to go with the Eclipse Foundation on our open source project. So um, let's move on to Eclipse Shay before um, later John will talk about a little bit more on the features on what we provide for Cobra. Um, so Eclipse Shay, Eclipse Shay itself is a fully hosted. It's a Kubernetes ID uh, native uh, IDE for it. Um, so it allows you to um, to develop your application. Basically, um, Shay itself has got a, a fair by default, uh, a fair editor by default that you can actually um, just run from your browser. You can actually access the system from Kub and you can actually do development in there. It's a fully hosted environment in there, so you can actually do end-to-end -end development in there as well. Um, so it's got ISP that's been, um, that, that, that you can actually, um, yeah, there's a language server protocol as well, so there's many things that you can actually plug into as part of the Eclipse, uh, Eclipse Tray platform. Um, so the way that they're doing it is um, it's got, they've got different dev files, basically defining how your workspace looks like. Um, so the workspace, consider that is uh, complete end-to-end -end things that you can actually define what your editor is, what are the plugins that you have as well, and then what are the sample applications that you can provide as part of the chain. So when you're loading up a workspace across uh, multiple developers of the team, you can just load up the same workspace and you get the same development environment and to start with. If I'll add, there was actually a great talk yesterday mm -hmm. from some of the chain developers on what on, on what dev, dev files are and what they're really capable of. and Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't know who here might have attended it, but I really do recommend checking out their slides online after because it, it gives a great insight into exactly what dev files are. Okay, so uh, why do we choose Eclipse J? So uh, just to take a step back on that, Cowin itself can actually run, um, itself has got a Eclipse uh, plugin in there, so if you go to Eclipse Marketplace, you can just download it. That one version is a fully um, local kind of type of environment. You can actually run Docker containers on it. You can still do containerized environment uh, application development in, on that. Uh, we also support uh, VS Code. Uh, VS Code is another editor that we provide as well. So those two are all local scenarios. We're actually working on IntelliJ as well. So uh, we can actually plug into many different environments. So those two particular scenarios are more for your local environment, we also are working on a hybrid kind of cases. But then uh, Eclipse Shea is where we see ourselves when you are running fully hosted. <laughs> so if you don't want to set up anything on your local system, you want to run everything from Kube, uh, and you still want to do containerized development, um, that's where Cowin plug into to Shea on that. So um, one of the reasons, like Shea itself is good because it's multi-cloud, multi um, workspaces, so so you can actually set up multiple workspaces. You can have different users um, setting up the workspaces. You can just do install ones on there. Um, and then the, um, the other thing that we are, I really like about Eclipse Shea for the integration is, it is you can actually run VS Code extensions in, in there. So if you recall, I mentioned we've got a VS Code extensions that's running on local. We can actually reuse the same VS Code extensions when running on Shea as well. So, um, yep. The only plugin for Visco, no, any other editor? Sorry, uh, we've got an uh, extension for yeah, Visco. Yes. Uh, we've got a Visco extension we call Eclipse plugin as well. Eclipse, of course. Yeah, but then uh, we're working on an IntelliJ version as well. No so, supply. Um, not yet. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so we, will, we, are, we are looking at 
other things, but um, yeah. <coughs> so supply in those cases, um, originally the, the, the way that we are planning, we are planning it, uh, we may be doing like a more like a command type of things for Jordan gigs type of integration because there's so many editors out there. We have to pick and choose at some point. Um, yeah. So yeah. So supply is a it's a good one, um, but yeah, currently it's not enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, the other couple of benefits of, of Shade itself uh, is a security constraint and development. So you can actually call a good security model in that you need to log in into your your queue system, and you actually um, yeah, it, it actually got, got some good security model in there. Um, you can also testing and debugging directly from Kube as well. So how just for your background just to talk a little bit more on how we actually plug into Che. So um, yeah, as I mentioned, we've got the VS Code extensions in, in place. Um, but then um, when we are working on that, we don't actually have to do a lot of work. Uh, we end up sharing around maybe 95% of the code basis between uh, a local environment versus when we are running on, on Che. There's only some very small uh, differences between the two. So. If you are running using our local system and then now you're moving to a hosted J environment, you actually get pretty much the same type of uh, usage behavior that you're seeing from local. So if you want to run your local and then you want to uh, later move to Kube for doing your development, it's an easy transition for you. And then uh, when deploying, to, the way that we do is we also uh, make use of a dev file that I mentioned before. So basically, we've got a dev file that you can actually install uh, CodeWin on top of that. Then you can actually run, uh, start up a, a workspace with CodeWin installed in there. Then you can just run from there. <coughs> so this is a little bit of PC diagram. I don't expect you, I'm not going to, to go through too much on that. So the, just to give you some ideas on different pieces that we're actually plugging into the shade. Um, the fair editors itself, we actually got some extensions put into there. That's where our VS Code extensions is, is providing the views and all the user interactions that we have on the, the editor itself. Uh, and then we've got the sidecar, which is like a communication channel between the two. And then we've got the Cowin engine. So the uh, Cowin services and the, what we call the PFP, which is the build engine. This is the same build engine that we are reusing on your local system if you're running your system, like uh, if you're running directly from Eclipse or directly from VS Code, uh, is actually using the same engine for doing the building. So that's why we kind of uh, put that concept and take, take it around so that both your local and your cube cases when you're doing the build, they are actually behaving fairly identical in terms of it. Uh, I guess the only difference is instead of we're using uh, Docker push and stuff like that, then we are actually using Kube, uh, Kube deploys for doing the application. So th those are the main differences between the two. So um, just to give you a feel on how easy for you to plug in or create a dev file on Shade, uh, not too much of that going on in there. You really have, to, this is the entire uh, plugin that we have on Shade, like the dev file that we have on Shade, basically defining the uh, ID itself, and then you can define what the sidecar, which is the containers for running the uh, our communication layer on that. And then we've got the J plugin in there as well. So that's pretty much it. So you can see how easy it is for us to actually just plug it into the J system. So let me uh, pass on to John to talk about the features a little bit more. Uh, before we do that, any questions in general? Okay. All right, cool. All right, so yeah. So this is kind of, uh, so I'm gonna talk about some of CodeWin's features before I kind of dive into the demo. So it's kind of uh, kind of like the CodeWin overview page in Eclipse Chase. So it gives you an idea of your project, its status, how it's exposed, um, a URL where you can access it, last time it was built. Um, in addition to that, you're able to shell into running containers. Um, we support multiple types of projects, as, El as uh, Elson mentioned. We are polyglot, so you're not constrained to any one language. You can build Go, you can build uh, JavaScript, you can build Java, you could build Scala, whatever you want. You can build if you've got a Docker file or S2I based image stream, whatever. Um, so, yeah, like we mentioned, we support OpenShift Do or Odo, it's a, a CLI for OpenShift. Um, so we provide a wrapper for it, and that wrapper allows you to take uh, your kind of S2I based project and deploy it onto Kubernetes and rapidly iterate against it for changes. So this is kind of an idea of what Odo does, and then we kind of wrap that all up 
for the user. You don't need to actually learn any of those commands. We do it for you. Uh, we all, again, as also mentioned, we also support Appsity. Uh, again, it's a CLI to enable you to easily create, build, test, and deploy your application from easily from a set of runtime stacks. Uh, with Kubernetes and Shay, again, we provide support for the CLI, allowing you to easily deploy Appsity applications onto Kubernetes. And this is kind of an idea of some of the applications that we support. And yeah, similarly, we have uh, built-in performance monitoring. So it's a lightweight live performance monitoring for key metrics, including HTTP response, uh, throughput memory, and CPU use. Uh, available metrics based on language. So also currently JavaScript and Java, I believe. Yes, both JavaScript and script um, and Java. So one of the main things why we actually introduced performance monitoring in place is because uh, if you think about on a typical cases of development, typically you will be going, like you don't do performance monitoring right at the beginning or during your day-to-day -day development cycle. You'll be more like checking into Git and then going through the, the CI CD pipeline and doing performance test testing as part of that. That's a little bit late in the cycle. That's why we introduced performance <coughs> monitoring for which it allows you to basically monitor as you are typing, I'm modifying this line of code, how does it actually affect my application? So. Um, you can actually do that right as, at the beginning of your early in your development cycle. That's why we inject it in there. Yep. Again, uh, we've got a load testing dashboard. So again, integrated performance testing dashboard. You can easily run repeatable load tests against your application endpoints. Uh, <coughs> easily configurable, including payloads. And you can compare results against historical uh, performance to spot regressions. Uh, similarly, we have an integration point with Tekton. So if you have the Tekton dashboard installed on your cluster, we can detect that, and you can easily open it up from CodeWind on Shea to deploy your applications through Tekton once you're finished iterating against them. Uh, we do have feature work plan to integrate the developer's view of the pipeline directly into the IDE, but that's not in place right now. Uh, similarly, we do have open API tools. Um, so easily generate client or server-side stubs for REST interfaces from open API definitions. Uh, currently, it's only for Eclipse IDE and VS Code. We do, however, have plans to add support as a standalone Eclipse J plugin that you can install alongside the Codewin plugins or independently on your own. All right, and then as a tech preview, we also support, uh, like Elson mentioned, a kind of hybrid scenario. So using a local IDE, you can deploy into a remote Kubernetes cluster. Um, potentially the same cluster using that you're developing with CodeWind, or with Che, I mean. Uh, right now it's in tech preview, uh, and it's supported on the uh, VS Code and Eclipse IDE extensions. And yeah, so quick, I guess, call out uh, uh, some of the open source projects we're working on and that CodeWind has integration points with. Um, they're all part of the Cabanero open source project, which all of these belong to. I'll actually show, yeah. Um, currently, for us, when we develop, we use a minikube on, yep. on the shoot. So can we configure it, yep. it on minikube, but then jump, and do the jump to another environment? Yep. So, oh yeah. So he was asking if CodeWind on Shea supports minikube. And yep, we do. I was actually going to do the demo today on minikube, but the internet here was a little too slow to set it up. So I fell back on one of my pre-set up clusters on OpenShift. Yeah. So, so the main idea is that like we've got the local type of environment that you can actually run in local and then, because that is actually faster in the sense that uh, you can do development on Docker directly. It's all still containerized based. So, and then after you are happy, kind of happy with that, you we, that's why we've got the hyper support in place that you can actually, without leaving your IDE, just publishing that and then trying to do development directly do development on, on the Kube system as well. So that's why um, we've got all these stuff in place and then after you are happy with that then you maybe do or or if you want to do a combination of that you can do a fully host environment on the shade scenario as well. So we try to cover as much of scenarios as possible but typically I as a, a developer myself I typically like everything running on my desktop machine whenever it's possible simply because it's quicker I don't have to always have internet access and stuff like that. Because, yeah. And yeah, and one of the reasons we liked or why we initially started looking at Che was it was Kube generic. You could run it on any cloud. And similarly, CodeWin itself is Kube generic. You can run it on any Kube. So they kind of work nicely together. So it doesn't matter if it's Minikube 
OpenShift or your CRC? Yeah. You test it on CRC? Uh, yeah. So any kind of local Kubernetes offering. We've also tested Docker desktop Kubernetes is another one. It all works fine. Um, the only really requirements we have, and that's uh, similar for Che, is that you have ing Ingress installed and set up. Uh, otherwise, it's you can pretty much run it anywhere. All right. Oh, yeah. Demo. So, uh, any other questions before I get into the demo? No. All right. So, I'm just going to show show you how you actually can set up a code wind on Che workspace and what it can actually do. Because you know, you you guys don't want to see just a bunch of slides. All right. So. Let me pull up a browser. All right. So first things first. So we mentioned the CodeWin dev file we have. You know, it's developer workspaces as code. So realizing now I didn't open a tab for this before. So we're, I'm just going to Google the CodeWin J plugin. And we're just going to grab that from our Git repository. So uh, I'm just going to grab it. And this is our latest release. So I'm just going to go this. I'm going to log in to my J cluster. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. So the only really requirement we have before you can go and create a code win on J workspace is uh, you have to apply a Kubernetes role and role binding to J itself before we can get deployed. And that's because code win itself requires additional roles than the lockdown J workspace uh, gives you. So to do that, oh, yep. Let me do that. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna got it saved here. So our docs highlight this too. So you just go to your terminal and uh, clear. All right, and you just run that command, and that will create the role and role binding on the cluster. There we go. Network's still a little slow. <laughs> All right. So uh, back to the browser. So we so we take that dev file and we do go to import dev file, go to source, copy and paste, and you hit create and open. And so this will run. Uh, I don't feel like this is this will take a couple minutes. I don't feel like showing this for the demo. So I'm just I've got a Che install with this already set up. So I'm just gonna log in. Oh. That's it. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to maximize this. Uh, can you guys see this? Is this? Do you want me to maximize it all, or I'll leave this a little bit? Okay. Right. How's that? All right. So got Che running. So let that load. So this little it's bringing up Thea. And then uh, once that's done, you'll have Che. Fingers crossed the internet cooperates today. It was not cooperating yesterday, so I'm hoping this does not fail. <coughs> While this is loading, do you have any questions? What is the memory footprint for the CodeWin plugin? For the CodeWin plugin as a whole? Uh, so, yeah. So he was asking what's the memory footprint as of the CodeWin plugin as a whole? So between. Um, code between uh, the code when sidecar and the code when instance that the sidecar then deploys and manages it's about one gigabyte plus or minus a bit in terms of memory but, but for in order to run that then you also have to take into account of your application container as well because I'm running 10 of those applications together then you take up more memory but those are more for your application itself and, around that and again, CodeWin can deploy small microservices, large, huge applications. We've had in the past uh, demoed uh, a game called Rogue Cloud on it, um, where you can kind of, using CodeWin, you can kind of code your own AI and have it deployed live into the game, which is kind of cool. All right, so this is CodeWin. So this is a simple, you know, your Che workspace. So this is the kind of the CodeWin view. This is the kind of what the CodeWin VS Code or the extension manages. So from there, you can see we've got two applications deployed, uh, Java microprofile one and a small node microservice. Um, so from this view, you can easily kind of create or generate uh, an application from one of our templates, or you can do a git clone from Thea and pull in your own application. 
We don't have a whole lot of requirements on that, uh, whether it just be a simple Docker file and Helm chart or um, a simple uh, kind of S2I some, uh, base application. So for this, I like Go, so I'm going to do a simple Go microservice. And give it a game. I'll do Go project, and it's going to run through. So uh, Codewind will do the git clone, and it will uh, <laughs> add the project. Um, I'm just going to close this debug output. And so yeah, it's adding the output. Um, oh. All right. So it looks like the CSS is a little buggy right now. Um, that's all right. <laughs> okay. So this is kind of the Codewind project overview page. Um, from there, you can see, like we mentioned earlier, you can see the status of your application, uh, the last time it was built, uh, what type it is, um, and what ports are exposed and what endpoint it's running at. So, so you can see there's an application endpoint, uh, an internal app port, and then if the project also, if the kind of exposes an external port, it'll show that as well. So you can just click here. Oh, oh, did not mean to do that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, similarly, you can easily get the logs for your application. So this makes debugging a whole lot easier. You don't need to go through uh, the like uh, kubectl or any other CLI to find the logs. Uh, it's right there in front of you. Similarly, uh, pretty easy to get the application logs. Uh, this doesn't give you a whole lot of meaning, but uh, it is straightforward to get both sets of logs for your application. Uh, yeah, and so um, similarly, uh, you can easily manage the types of projects and templates your uh, Codewind pulls in. So um, we've got Codewind style projects, which are Docker file based and Helm chart based. So the only requirements there that you have a Docker file and a Helm chart in it. Uh, then we have AppSeed style projects, which then just pull in the AppSeed CLI. Those have those are based on uh, which ones will support will be based on uh, which stacks are available, and that's uh, what those templates pull in. And then we have OpenShift templates, which are based on the OpenShift do CLI, and those will be based on the image streams available on your OpenShift cluster. Yeah. Um, so let me show you. So. OpenShift do, oh, I'll showcase another project, uh, do audio note. So it'll go through, it'll create, and this time it'll uh, use the Odo CLI to uh, deploy the project and then redeploy when changes are made. Uh, any questions so far? No. Uh, so the current, don't quote me on that, but our current plan for that is like uh, first quarter, we're going to have some type of app review going on. Uh, at least that's what we're shooting for. But um, yeah, of course, the phase can be moving, but that's the timeline that we're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> so again, w what we mentioned is we, we watch for changes, so it's pretty straightforward to uh, make a change with Codewind, save it, and that change will then get picked up from our side. We'll redeploy, we'll build, rebuild the application and redeploy it. And we'll take the small steps possible to reduce the amount of build time. So for Go, we don't do a whole lot. We cache the image build, so you only, we only build the steps that are needed. And then we, in this case, we do like a Helm update rather than a Helm install. So we only, re, we only replace the parts of the application that need to be. So let's build through. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was when you're, uh, we also have an image registry manager. So if your application needs to push to a Docker registry, you can enter in your credentials there and add it through. So yeah, uh, if I open up this application now, you can see it's been updated. Yeah. Yeah. So that was Codewind. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets built inside Codewind. Sorry. Um, so he was asking, where does the uh, code, where does uh, the Docker image for the application get built? So uh, that gets built by Codewind using the build a CLI, and 
so we build it inside CodeWind, and then it will get pushed up to uh, the registry specified in the image registry manager I just showed. One of the things that we did in order to yep. because we built uh, images for every change on our computer, mm -hmm. to do a layer layer that it didn't yep. so yeah. Can you do this kind of scheme yep. using Corbin? Yep. So, so yeah, Bucket build itself is layer cache. So we are actually we're using the same container for doing the build, so we're not spawning off a new so container. It's not a new container. When it's not, one yeah, we've got a build container. It actually depends on the coding style that you have. Like we were talking about the coding style, which is our Docker build style is actually staying up there with the, the build container is actually always staying up and we are not we are reusing it. So your Docker cache is actually preserved yeah, so in that case. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And the same for Maven cache and stuff like that. So if you're running Maven builds and stuff like that as part of your, your stuff, whenever you are spawning off a new build, we're not recycling the, the container at all. We are reusing the same container. Now the only so exception each container is designed for one environment. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the, the, the running environment, it actually depends on the application type that you are dealing with. Uh, for example, we've got a micro profile type of applications for which yes, it's actually using the same runtime and build con as a single container. The server will get recycled, but the container doesn't get actually get goes down. Now, the, uh, the only case that you're really bringing down the container, you may lose the cache, is when you're actually modifying the build container Docker file. Then your container needs to be recycled and you lose some of the cache. But even that's the case, for example, uh, things like Raven and Spring, in those cases, we are actually kind of caching some of the preliminary cache in place that we are actually minimizing the time that for you to rebuild those those cases as well. The other thing I would add too is, we it's entirely up to you too, you can totally format uh, if you want your Docker file to have multi-stage builds, multi-layered builds, um, um, and kind of follow the kind of Docker file best practices, you certainly can. We support it. Uh, nothing will prevent that as well. Um, the microservice I'm, microservices we're demoing here, at least, are a little simple, so they're not. They don't necessarily require it. But like Elson said, we've got more complicated project types, more complicated uh, templates that uh, do well, have that. Exactly. The yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was the demo. Any other questions before I move on? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. And if you open like Code Green's chess side card. Yep. So I'm wondering, so could you open the terminal? Yep. And basically you actually embed all the tools like auto, auto, and stuff like that, all in all are available in this side. Not this side? not this terminal, um, but maybe we should repeat the question. Uh, yeah, so he was asking if we could embed all the tools in that um, kind of plugins container. Uh, not in this container, but something that would be worth considering at least. Yeah, um, so, so if you recall the diagram, like the architecture diagram that I showed earlier, the sidecar is more like the communication between the, uh, the, the Eclipse chain and also our build engine, for which our build engines we use on the same, like it's, it's actually a different container um, that we, we actually use on the local case as well. So the, most of the build logic is actually within that extra containers. It's not directly on the sidecar. Sidecar, from our perspective, is more for doing file watching uh, mechanisms and also uh, doing the communication uh, transfer through. The actual build system itself is actually running on a different container. Yeah, and just what I'm not entirely clear is where the builder is running, where the other is running. So how you how you do uh, open should do yeah, from, so the, from the ID, from which container is so it's the, uh, the PIP container, that build engine, uh, the green part of that, that's where all the okay. things is running. It, if you take a look at the yellow uh, thing, that is uh, the yellow part of it, is everything is actually within the, the J, um, the J uh, <coughs> pod, uh, but then the, the, the container itself is actually running outside of the J pod, but within the same uh, namespace. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Alright, so let me continue on from... Okay, so... Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, visit uh, our websites, codewind.dev or clips.org slash codewind, same site, uh, visit us. Uh, you can follow our documentation and see uh, how you can actually get Codewind installed on Eclipse J or some other platform. Uh, yeah, here's our website. Uh, here's our GitHub link. So our Eclipse co Eclipse slash Codewind and Eclipse slash Codewind J plugin. Uh, we're on Mattermost with Eclipse slash dash Codewind and Eclipse dash Codewind Dev. Uh, we're on Twitter and our Eclipse.org mailing list. Now, uh, one thing that I want to mention, we are an open source project, so not only we welcome users, we also welcome developers as well. So if you find bugs and stuff like that, open an issue on us, even submit pull requests on us. We're looking for developers on the project itself, so we're not only like looking for users, uh, uh, developers are always welcome for us. What language? Um, Is it a Java project? So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a... So he was asking what languages Codewind's written in. So it's a mix of languages right now. So the build engine's written in TypeScript, uh, as well as, as similarly the VS Code and Thea extension that we're running also TypeScript. Uh, I'd say TypeScript's the majority. Um, some components are written in Go, and a small bit of a legacy portion is written in Java. In terms of the build engine, but of course the Eclipse plugin itself is entirely in Java. So uh, right. yeah, it does have a, a range of uh, languages that we are actually involving. It's probably too much in a sense, but uh, yeah. yeah. Eclipse so. IDE plugin is not the legacy part that I was calling. So yeah, 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 yeah we are yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's good that you. That was it. Uh, any questions, comments? Maybe the, the last question for yep. me is: um, I suspect that first there was a VS Code extension, and then you embedded in Chef. Yeah. So what was your experience uh, for uh, porting the VS Code extension to Eclipse Chat? Was it smooth or you had some hiccups? So, okay, so, so let me repeat the question okay. first. So the question is, um, we are actually adopting our VS Code extensions in Shea. Uh, during bad experiences, how do we find the actual adoptions is and, and, and how easy it is to, to do that? Overall, it was pretty easy. Now, now the lead Thea extension developer for Code One isn't here, mm -hmm. but we worked closely with them. And overall, nine, again, probably roughly 95% of the code is identical. A uh, small portion of it uh, had to be changed between differences between the Thea and VS Code APIs. And then the rest of the difference is to accommodate uh, scenarios that only exist on Che and not, say, Yes, yeah, at the beginning of the adoption, we do find a couple of there uh, related, uh, especially some of the stuff on VS Code are not quite working as is um, on the there in there. So, so there are a couple of things that we actually some pull requests for doing the fixes on that. But after that, it's fairly smooth sailing, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I guess another thing to add on to that, our v our um, like the, the code base is so almost identical and close together that it's the same it's the same repository, same build scripts. The only difference is our CI scripts um, spit out two extensions and it which one you install, you know, there's a we basically do a codewind.v6 and a codewind thea.v6. And despite the name, it's not a Thea extension, it's a VS Code extension. Yeah. Any okay. other questions? Any or? other questions? Okay. If not, thank you. That's it. Thank you.